In this video, we'll talk through the rates of reaction topic from Unit 1 of National 5 Chemistry. By the end of this video, you should know how to follow a chemical reaction and also about the graphs associated with rates of reaction, be able to talk about increasing the rate of reaction and how to calculate the average rate of a reaction. We'll start first of all with the signs of the chemical reaction, one of which is a precipitation where we have got a solid being formed when two solutions have reacted together. We can also be asked about when a gas is given off, also called effervescence, bubbling and fizzing. We could be asked about energy, where it could be heat, light or sound that's released, or a colour change. In all of these reaction cases, we have got a new substance that has been produced, and that's important to remember. Typical types of questions that you could be asked would be to identify a chemical reaction from a list or something that's not a chemical reaction from the list. If we work our way through each of them, in the first example of ice melting, we have got water as a solid at the start and water as a liquid at the end. We have not made a new substance, meaning this is not a chemical reaction. On the other three, we have got new chemicals being formed, therefore they are chemical reactions. Other things that you could be asked about is how we would actually follow a chemical reaction. There's two main ways that you'd be asked about, one of which would be to follow the volume of gas that's been produced. We can use a gas syringe to do this, or we can have an upside down measuring cylinder in a trough of water. The measuring cylinder is filled with water, the gas bubbles through, and then we can just measure how much has been produced over a certain length of time. You could also do a similar thing, but looking at the mass of a gas produced, we have our apparatus on a balance and we measure the mass over time and see how it changes. From these, we will then be able to draw graphs. When we're looking at our graphs for these reactions, the steeper the curve, the faster the reaction. There's four ways we can speed up a chemical reaction. These are temperature, concentration, particle size, and also using a catalyst. Another thing that you might be asked about is the definition of a catalyst, where a catalyst speeds up the chemical reaction without being used up. We could be given two graphs and we can be asked to predict or suggest how we have produced different graphs in our experiment. The top one has a steeper curve, therefore it's the faster reaction. This could be because of higher temperature, higher concentration, or using smaller pieces, so the lower particle size. The green one at the bottom is a slower reaction where we could use a lower temperature, lower concentration, or use larger pieces of our reactant. We can also be asked about a case where we have produced less of the products than in the first graph. When we get a smaller quantity of reactant used, we will end up with a smaller quantity of product being formed, which is what we've got in this case. So a typical type of question, we talk about two experiments have been carried out to investigate rate, and we're given our graphs that look like this. And we're asked to say how we can end up with the graph for experiment two in this case. They give you four options and we'll go through them one by one. First one, if we've got a lower temperature, we'd have a slower rate, which is what we seem to have in experiment two. However, we would have ended up with the same quantity of product being formed and we don't have that. So A cannot be correct for that reason. If we used a more concentrated hydrochloric acid, the reaction would go faster, not slower. That's that one away. If we use half of an indigestion tablet, we will end up making half of the volume of the products, making that one look like the good, correct answer. If we used a crush tablet, it would make it go faster. The graph would be steeper, which is not. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Moving on to average rate. If you at any point have forgotten how to calculate average rate, luckily in the data booklet on page number three, we have got our relationship that tells us the average rate equals the change in quantity over change in time. So the average rate, we're looking at how much it's changed by in the particular time, and we're going to divide the change by the time. So you'll see it represented with the delta symbol, which just means change. So rate is the change in quantity divided by the change in time. Now you can be asked this in three main different ways. The first way, they'll just give you the information in a sentence. During the first 20 seconds of a reaction, five centimetres cubed of gas was given off and they're asking you to calculate the average rate. So if we pick out the information we need, 
we have 20 seconds as our change in time and 5 centimetres cubed as our change in quantity. The data booklet tells us it's quantity divided by time, 5 over 20 gives you 0 0.25 centimetres cubed per second. And that makes our answer D from this multiple choice question. Another way they can give you is they can give you information in a table and ask you to pick out the relevant pieces of information. The question talks about the average rate between 20 and 30 seconds. So I'm looking at time 20 and time 30. And I'll just make this a little bit easier to follow so we can forget about everything else. So we are now having to decide or work out the change in quantity. Well, at the first time, we're at 40 centimetres cubed and we finish up at 55. And that is a difference of 15 centimetres cubed. The time is taking 10 seconds for that to happen. So it's 15 divided by 10, given as 1.5 centimetres cubed per second. The third way that they can ask you this is they can give you it in a graph. And they can ask you to work it out for a particular time period. And this question is wanting the first 25 seconds. And it's wanting the average rate of reaction in moles per litre per second. So with this one, we've got concentration rather than volume or mass. But we just do it in exactly the same way. So in this one, it's a multiple choice question. So we've got our options that we'll come back to at the end. So during the first 25 seconds, so let's look at those points. So at the start, at zero seconds, we are up at one mole per litre. After 25 seconds, we are at 0 0.25 moles per litre. So our quantity starts at one, ends at 0 0.25 moles per litre. And our time starts at zero and ends at 25 seconds. Now, we can use that information into our change in quantity over change in time. So our quantity has went from 1 to 0 0.25, which is a change of 0 0.75 moles per litre. And it's took, taken 25 seconds for that to happen. So 0 0.75 moles per litre divided by 25 seconds gives us a rate of 0 0.03 moles per litre per second. And when we look at our options that we were given, it fits in with the answer being C. Now, hopefully through this video, you have gained a better understanding of how to follow a chemical reaction and of the graphs associated with rates of reaction, being able to identify ways of increasing the rates of reaction and also how to calculate the average rate of reaction. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.